for agreeing to chat with us. You're welcome. The second of these is going to be on ophthalmic emergencies. What do we need to be sending to you the same day? Let's start off with red eye. Well, red eyes, as we've uh, discussed in the eye examination, there are two types of red eyes. The ciliary, which is around the cornea congestion, usually indicates serious disease, such as uveitis, keratitis, acute glaucoma, then I would refer. While if it is for initial or peripheral congestion, mm -hmm. indicates dry eyes or a simple conjunctivitis, well, you can initiate the treatment. If there's no improvement, then you refer to us. So that's as simple as that in red, red eyes. Oh, so uh, we're referring too many dry eyes that perhaps are simply um, red eyes that are simply dry eyes, yes? Yes, sometimes that's the case, but uh, then you have to diagnose it first mm -hmm. by, you know, exclusions, by doing some staining. Mm -hmm. And if you use a fluorescein, I advise do it before you take the swabs because it may affect the result of the swabs, whether it's for corneal problems or whether it is for conjunctival problems. Okay. So central redness we refer, thank you. Indeed. What about sticky eyes? Again, sticky eyes depends on the age and the color of the stickiness itself, which is very important. If it is a greenish, yellowish, indicates bacterial infection, then antibiotics can be used. If it's a newborn baby mm. with a sticky eyes and the mother had vaginal delivery with some stickiness and discharge, then I would suspect ophthalmia neonatorum, chlamydia in nature, then I would refer. While if it is, you know, older children, usually it is because of blocked tear passages. Then so within I'll, a week of birth? Within a week of birth, usually they are a neonatorum. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is after that, then I will suspect uh, blockage of the tear passages. Then you need to ask the mother or advise her to do massage, okay. give a short course of antibiotics and cleaning of the lashes, ATC. And the young adult who we suspect might have chlamydia, do we swab them? Well, you can swab them before you send them to us, but again, before you use the fluorescein, because it will affect the microbiology test. And uh, these patients, we need to liaise with the geomedicine in, in treating them. They are usually the sexually active age groups when they have only unilateral, sticky, yellowish, purulent sort of discharge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what about the painful eye? Well, painful eyes, again, uh, uh, depends. If it is photophobia only, which means corneal problems, again, staining comes handy here. You have to use a fluorescein, and I think I expect every GP to have a, a box of fluorescein uh, mm -hmm. dyes in their fridge, mm -hmm. and that gives you a lot of clues. If it is just a, a corneal abrasion, history of trauma, then an iPad will be sufficient with some antibiotics. Usually they heal within hours. However, if it is dendritic ulcer, mm -hmm. and you see branching ulcer, then you can start them with Zovirex if it is the first time. So Virex five times a day. If it is recurrent or if it is not responding to treatment, then refer them to us. But if it is a real pain in the eye, dull ache, throbbing, such as due to keratitis or due to uh, uveitis or acute glaucoma, then I would suggest referring them to us. And if we suspect temporal arteritis, of course, there's a new pathway. Uh, there's a new pathway coming. I mean, we can talk about it if you want, but I think uh, temporal arteritis is a different category. It's older age group, 70 plus. They have usually some systemic diseases, uh, painful temple, and pulseless arteries uh, with or without visual problems, then there is a pathway, I think, to refer them to the rheumatologist and then we can okay. deal with it later. And what about the um, condition that the patients perhaps complain about more? Um, and that's the loss of vision which causes anxiety. It is indeed alarming, but you have to differentiate whether it is painful or painless. Painless loss of vision, usually due to vascular problems, central retinal artery occlusions, vein occlusions, um, bleeding from diabetic retinopathy, then they are not urgent really because whatever is there will be there still a week or two or three weeks later. So I refer them soonish to us. While if it is painful, then we need to see them. There are examples of painful loss of vision such as temporal arthritis, you mentioned it, it's an urgent referral. And the other example is retropulbar neuritis. Again, that's between us and a neurologist you can refer to either. There is only one, I think, category of painless loss of vision in younger age group, myopic, with sudden loss of vision, with the flashes of light, then you suspect retinal detachment, mm. then it has to be mm. an urgent referral. So to go back to the painless loss of vision, um, 
should be referring though to the vascular um, team rather than to yourself. Well, to us because usually it is an eye a problem mm -hmm. with uh, systemic disease. Mm -hmm. So we can pick it first, and then we need to deal with the eye, obviously, mm -hmm. and then diagnose the systemic disease, or it's already diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So I think us to to deal with them first. Mm -hmm. So if we're not sure and we have a dilemma and it's uh, a, a, a floater, for example. Um, Choose and book advice and guidance, you're telling us, is underused. Unfortunately, it's underused, and we ch check our choose and book, most uh, of us really, on a daily basis. So I think that should be uh, a good option for you to ask advice, whether shall I refer this patient now, or shall I uh, wait, or what do I do? And I think uh, this will be a step before referring the patient. Okay, thank you very much.